a 23-year-old woman named Noah, who is desperate to get a boyfriend. She uses online dating sites and has gone out with several men, but all of them have resulted in disappointment. During one such date, she meets a man named Chadwick, who turns out to be a complete idiot. He only makes misogynistic remarks and talks about his money. He also makes it clear that Noah will be paying for their dinner. As their conversation unfolds, Noah becomes increasingly annoyed and she decides to leave. But Chadwick makes sure to pass some mean remarks on her. He calls her a letdown who wasted his precious time. Noah, who is used to such disappointments, doesn't say a word and simply leaves. Later at the gym, she confides in her best friend, Molly, about the incident. She believes that she is going to remain single her entire life. However, Molly assures her God is saving the best man for her. At night, Noah goes to a nearby supermarket, where she bumps into a man named Steve. The two quickly bond over their shared love for cotton candy grapes and Noah appears to be smitten by his charm. Before they go their separate ways, Steve abruptly asks for her number. Being the desperate girl that she is, Noah gives it to him without any hesitation. The following day, she talks about Steve with her best friend, Molly. Noah mentions that he is a handsome guy with a good personality, but the sad thing is that he hasn't texted her yet. In response, Molly jokes that he is probably married. Later, as Noah is on her way home, she finally gets a call from Steve. He wastes no time and asks her out on a date. Noah is taken aback by the sudden request, but she is so desperate that she agrees without thinking much. During their date, Steve and Noah open up and share about their backgrounds. He reveals that he's actually a surgeon from Texas and is new to this town. In turn, Noah says that she just graduated from college and is looking for a job. The two then connect over the fact that they don't have parents and are living alone. Steve also mentions that he's so focused with his work that he doesn't have time to use any social media. After their date, Noah asks him to come over to his apartment. There, things get heated and the two end up having a romantic time. The next morning, Noah wakes up feeling refreshed. This is the happiest she has been in a long while. She secretly takes a photo of a sleeping Steve and then calls her best friend, Molly, to share the details of her fantastic night. Molly is happy for her but thinks it's strange that Steve isn't on the internet. As their conversation unfolds, Noah mentions that Molly's ex-boyfriend, Paul was working as a bartender at the restaurant last night. It is revealed that Molly recently came out as a lesbian and broke up with Paul. The following night, Noah meets up with her new boyfriend again. While having some takeout, they discuss more about their lives. Noah shares that she has a best friend named Molly, who knows everything about her. After the two finish eating, Steve suggests they dance. Noah is a bit unsure but ends up having a lot of fun. They eventually get tired and sit down. Out of the blue, Steve then asks Noah if she'd like to go on a weekend trip with him. She asks about the destination, but he keeps it a secret. Nonetheless, she agrees as she has started liking him. After Steve departs, Noah calls her best friend and tells her about the upcoming trip. Molly is a bit worried as Noah is going out with someone she barely knows. However, the latter reassures her best friend that she will be fine. She also sends a picture of Steve to her, saying he is perfect. The following day, Steve takes Noah to his place, saying they will be leaving for the trip early the next morning. Our girl innocently agrees but she still has no idea what's in store for her. She tries to text Molly about her location, but her phone's signal appears to be weak. After driving for several hours, they finally arrive at a shady-looking house. It appears to be completely isolated from the rest of the city. Noah is a bit weirded out by this, but she doesn't say anything at the moment. After a while, Steve prepares a drink and gives it to her. He asks her to guess its contents, but as soon as Noah tastes it, she feels dizzy and passes out. After regaining consciousness, she finds herself chained up in a room with Steve. He confesses to drugging her, which leaves Noah feeling confused and scared. Steve then drops a major bombshell. He is actually a cannibal who eats human meat and also sells it to wealthy clients. He explains that many of his clients prefer the meat of young women, so he tricks and kidnaps them by taking them on dates. He also tells Noah that he plans to keep her alive for as long as possible to maintain the freshness of her flesh while removing the body parts slowly. Terrified for her life, Noah tries to fight back, but Steve overpowers her and pins her to the ground. After the cannibal leaves, Noah desperately calls for help. A woman from the adjacent room named Penny answers back, revealing that Steve has kidnapped several women here. As the two women talk to each other, they learn that both of them are orphans. This means that Steve only targets women with no parents, as he knows that no one will come looking for them. Just then, another woman starts singing and Penny reveals that it's Steve's other victim named Melissa, who has lost her mind after being kidnapped. On the other hand, Molly begins to worry after not hearing from her friend for a while. She sends her a few messages and surprisingly, Steve texts her back using Noah's phone. He mentions that they are relaxing at a cottage far away from the city. He also sends her an image of a beautiful waterfall and says that Noah is planning to switch off her mobile phone for a while. She is doing so to get away from technology and enjoy nature. Molly, who knows her best friend pretty well, senses that something is amiss. So, she looks up the waterfall image on the internet to find its location. Lo and behold, it turns out to be a stock photo taken from a random website. 
On the other hand, Steve approaches Noah again, but this time he is gentle. He hands her some new clothes and even lets her take a shower. Noah takes advantage of this kindness and tries to run away. But unfortunately, Steve manages to capture her. He then drags her to the surgery room and removes her buttocks as punishment. Elsewhere, Molly starts looking for her best friend. At first, she goes to her ex-boyfriend, Paul's restaurant, where Noah had her first date with Steve. The two awkwardly greet each other and Molly gets straight to the point. She inquires with Paul if he knows about this Steve guy. The bartender appears to be a bit hesitant, as he is not allowed to share client details. But with Molly insisting, he has no choice but to comply. Paul then reveals that the guy's actual name is Bredon Kemp. Later, Molly returns home and searches the name on the internet. She learns that he is married to a woman named Anne and has two children. After this, Molly decides to pay Anne a visit. She also sends the location to Paul, asking him to come looking for her if anything goes wrong. Back at the butcher house, Noah learns that she is the only victim Steve has slept with. This means that he might have a soft spot for her. Noah then decides to take advantage of this situation. From that moment onwards, she stops resisting and tries to seduce Steve every chance she gets. She also shows a sudden interest in human meat, saying she wants to taste it. In the next scene, Molly reaches Anne's location and straight away reveals that her husband has been dating other women. The woman appears to be startled by this revelation, so she invites Molly inside for a chat. Unfortunately, as they delve further into their conversation, Steve suddenly shows up. He acts cool and pretends that he doesn't know anyone by the name of Noah. This somewhat convinces Molly and she believes that she has barged into the wrong house. But before she leaves, she gives her friend another call. To her surprise, the phone rings in Steve's pocket, revealing that he is actually the kidnapper. Now that he has been exposed, Steve cunningly says that she shouldn't have come here. Molly tries to run away, but before she can do so, Anna knocks her out from behind. It turns out she is also a cannibal friend of Steve. Some time later, Steve moves Molly to his remote butcher house in the woods. Then, he goes back to Noah, gives her new clothes, and invites her for dinner. In another scene, we see Anne in the bathroom, revealing that she has a fake leg. This suggests that she was once one of Steve's victims before becoming his wife. During dinner, Steve and Noah have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, almost as if they are a couple. She inquires how he got into this business, to which he shares that he tasted human meat for the first time when he was 18. Initially, he was scared of being caught by the police but then, he couldn't get more of that taste. As the years passed, he developed a craving for human meat and made friends who shared his unusual taste. Eventually, he found a community willing to pay a lot of money for this rare meat, turning him into a human meat trafficker. After sharing his story, Steve offers Noah some human flesh. She is disgusted by it, but to keep her facade, she eats it with a happy face. After dinner, Steve takes Molly away for his gruesome purposes. Meanwhile, Paul, not having heard from his ex-girlfriend for a while, gets worried and starts searching for her. Cut to the next scene, Steve invites Noah for another dinner. She seems to have gained his trust by now, which becomes even more evident when he gives her a lovely pink dress. Later during dinner, as Noah munches on some human flesh, Steve reveals that it is Melissa. This expectedly horrifies our girl but she doesn't show it on her face. After dinner, Steve shows her a hidden space filled with items from his victim, indicating that he's abducted and killed many women before. He then discloses something disgusting. His clients actually like to have the belongings of the women they eat, which makes them feel closer to their food. Just then, Noah spots Molly's phone in the corner. This makes her realize that her best friend had come looking for her, but ended up becoming another one of his victims. Furious, Noah decides to take action right now. She knows that Steve can change his demeanor any day, so she has to act quickly. Hence, she gathers up the courage and asks him for a dance. Surprisingly, he agrees and even uncuffs her. After setting the mood with a romantic dance, she leads him to his room on the pretense of pleasuring him. However, instead of giving him a good time, she brutally bites his testicles off. Noah then hurriedly grabs the keys and runs away while Steve continues writhing in pain. She soon reaches the compartment where the other victims are being held. All of them appear to be dead except for Penny and her best friend, Molly. Noah quickly frees them and the trio proceeds to escape. But out of nowhere, Steve shows up and attacks them. A tense battle then ensues between the two parties and despite Steve being outnumbered and injured, he manages to overpower the women. However, he soon becomes tired and gets knocked out. The girls then grab Molly's phone and escape the place, but they aren't able to reach very far as Penny appears to be missing a limb. Unfortunately, Steve once again shows up, this time with a gun in hand. He fires several rounds at them but each of them miss. Meanwhile, Paul has arrived outside the house, following the GPS on Molly's phone. When he hears the gunshots, he immediately makes a run for it. The girls notice this and realize that help isn't arriving anytime soon. So, they decide to take matters into their own hands. They quickly form a plan and split up in separate directions to confuse the cannibal. And when Steve lunges at one of them, all the three girls gang up and beat him to a pulp. Noah then grabs his own gun and finishes him off. After this, they try to call for help using Molly's phone but it abruptly gets switched off. After a while, Anne also arrives at the place looking for her husband. 
When she finds his lifeless body on the ground, she gets enraged and attacks Noah. The two women then go back and forth at each other and it appears as if Anne is gaining the upper hand. But fortunately, Molly arrives in the nick of time and smashes the woman's head in with a shovel. She does this repeatedly until Anne finally passes away. In the final scene, as Molly and Noah are trying to make sense of what happened, the latter receives a text from Chadwick. He asks her you up. 